the WBBM Air Theater, Wrigley Building, Chicago. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, the refreshing, delicious treat that gives you chewing enjoyment, presents for your listening enjoyment, John Lund as... Johnny Dollar. Hi, Johnny. Frank Preston, Baltimore Liability. Oh, hi, Frank. How's it going? Okay, I guess, Johnny. Say, are you tied up? No, not at the moment. What is it? A bad check artist out on the West Coast has been giving us a lot of headaches lately. Uh Uh-huh. Hotel in Monterey, another one in Santa Cruz, and this morning I had a wire from one of our clients who runs a place in Santa Barbara. $4,500 worth of claims already, and all in five days. Sounds like a very busy man. Uh, That's something else. It isn't a man, it's a woman. A woman? And you've got to stop it, Johnny. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum bring you John Lund in another adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum refreshes you. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum gives you real chewing enjoyment. Yes, for chewing enjoyment plus refreshment, it's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. The lively, delicious flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint cools your mouth, helps keep your throat moist, and gives you a nice little lift. The good, smooth chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint helps keep you feeling fresh and alert, adds enjoyment to whatever you're doing. So for chewing enjoyment plus refreshment, treat yourself often to Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Baltimore Liability and Trust Corporation, 418 Virginia Boulevard, Baltimore, Maryland. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Emily Braddock matter. Expense account item one, $158.16. Plain fare and incidentals, Hartford to Santa Barbara. My mid-morning arrival was timed for the sun and the sea to show off a sizable and pleasantly crowded harbor, some sprawling hotels, two lush green golf courses, and acres and acres of snug, expensive homes. At the police station, my contact, a Sergeant Lopez, was out, so I went over to the Harbor Inn and met the victimized hotel operator, Glenn Sheridan. Tall, gray-haired, slacks, sports shirt, suntan, and sandals. (laughs) On the face of it, you'd think I'd been in the hotel business 20 minutes instead of 20 years, the way that woman took me. Well, she's done the same thing in several other nice hotels up and down the coast, if that's any comfort. Well, it isn't. I suppose the thing that bothers me most is that if she walked through that door right now and told me none of it was true, I'd probably believe her. She was that good. Mr. Dollar, she was the best. Why, she pranced in here as big as life, and she probably didn't have a nickel in her purse. What's more, for the whole four days she was here, she didn't break her stride once. What do you mean? Well, only the best of everything. Oh. She gave you a check for $813, is that right? Uh, Painfully right. Uh Uh-huh. And I took it, no questions. (laughs) Every night in the dining room, she'd order champagne, special dishes... I've seen my share of grifters and bad check artists, but she tops them all. Perfume, clothes, luggage, conversation, and a very pretty woman, Dollar. Beautiful, in fact. She checked in alone, registered as Mrs. Robert Payne Beverly Hills, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Did it strike you as odd that a woman would check into a place like this, a resort hotel, alone? No, she wasn't alone long. She met other people. Became friends with at least a half a dozen guests in the place. Uh Uh-huh. The way she was throwing my money around, why not? She picked up all the tabs. Well, ordinarily, I'd have been suspicious under those circumstances, Mr. Dollar, but she threw me off right from the very start. Well, how's that, Mr. Sheridan? Well, she showed up about midnight, came in a cab that was just loaded down with expensive luggage. Probably wrote a bad check for that someplace. Yeah, probably. She came swinging in the lobby with a cabbie following her and told the night clerk she wanted to see me. When I came down to the desk, she yelled, Sherry! Ran up and kissed me and asked how my wife was. Can you beat that? Nope. She acted as though we knew each other. And one of those tricks your mind plays on you in this business, I actually thought I remembered her from someplace. I see. 
She registered as Mrs. Robert Payne. Said she was on her way back from Lake Tahoe. Wanted to rest up. Something about just getting a divorce and being awarded 3000 a month alimony. That impressed me. Well, it didn't impress anyone, Mr. Sheridan. Well, I did make a check. She gave her home address as Beverly Hills, and there was a Robert Payne listed there. Later on, I found out he's in Europe with his wife and children. But his name was in the book. Yeah, and that was enough for me. Oh, she had a wonderful four days here, I'll say that for her. Getting back to that part about her looking familiar. Well, there's nothing in that, Dollar. I did think I had seen her before, and of course she helped me think it, but I was too embarrassed to press the matter with her, I guess. Do you have a copy of her hotel account? I'd like to look it over. Yeah. The police have the check she gave me. It was drawn on a bank in Beverly Hills. Was it uh, personalized? No. Maybe I should have thought something of that, huh? Uh -huh. Well, here's this much. I can't stand to look it over. It makes me kind of sick. $813. I spent another hour with Mr. Sheridan as he distastefully covered the items on the bill she'd paid with a bad check. Later that afternoon, I met with Sergeant Lopez, who reported a woman answering the same description had passed bad checks in Burlingame, Santa Maria, and Ojai. Expense account item two, $114.85. Transportation to Monterey and Santa Cruz, where I interviewed the other two clients who had filed claims. Their stories were much the same as Sheridan's. Expense account item three, $4.15. Long distance phone call. That you, Johnny? Yeah, Frank. All the claims are pretty solid. The police have no line Don't on this... Don't come home. Oh? Hop down to Malibu Beach. She's done it again. In a place called the Seaside Inn. The guy who runs it found out it was bad 15 minutes after she left. That was this morning. I don't expect any miracles, but if you get down there right away, maybe you can get on her trail. Well, I'll try. Expense account item four, $38 even. Transportation Santa Barbara to Malibu. I didn't even bother to listen to a disgruntled hotel proprietor repeat a story I knew so well, but went directly to the sheriff's station and Sergeant Pell's. Well, that's about the picture. She was at the inn for four days and checked out this morning. She used the name Bradley, Ellen Bradley. She can't be too far ahead of you now. No. There might be a break on this one, too. While she was at the inn, she took up with one of our local residents, a man by the name of Garland. Lives over in the colony. He drove her into town this morning. Have you talked to him? I can't find him anywhere. He has a house over in the colony. The colony? Yeah, uh, that's uh, down the road a piece. They call it that because a lot of movie stars built beach homes there a long time ago. Movie colony, you know? Oh, yeah. Is this Garland an actor? <laughs> yeah, when he gets work, which isn't very often, I guess. Mainly, he keeps suntanned. We're trying to locate him now, and as soon as we do it. Oh, excuse me. Sure. Sergeant Pell. Yeah, right away. Garland's home now. I went with Sergeant Pells to talk with Garland, who was in trunks and sunglasses in front of his house. A healthy, muscular, handsome man in his mid-thirties. He was a little stunned by the news we brought him. Ellen, a phony? Sergeant, are you sure about this? Well, you can ask the man at the seaside inn. He got the check. And Mr. Dollar here has been looking all over the state for it. Uh -huh. Well, come on, let's go up into the house. All right. I thought I knew her pretty well. Did you meet her out here or did you know her before? Oh, I met her at the Seaside Inn the first night she was here. Go ahead. Thank you. Now, sit down. Like something to drink? Uh, no, thank you. Not now, thanks. understand you drove her into Los Angeles. That's right, I took her in this morning. Where did you take her? Beverly Glen Hotel. Did she check in there? No, she just dumped all her luggage. She told me she didn't know whether or not she'd have to go to Chicago tonight. Something about a house she owned there that had to be rented or sold. Did you leave her there? No, she made a phone call. Said she had to meet her lawyer. Yeah? she say where? Yeah, a bar in Hollywood. Uh, Topper on Coenga. So I drove her over there and left her. When was this? Oh, three hours ago. About one o'clock, I guess. Uh, how was she dressed? Oh... Uh, Black strapless job. Uh-huh. Did she mention any names? Tell you anything about herself? 
Yeah, she told me that six months ago her little two-year-old boy was killed in an automobile accident. She said that was the thing that broke up her marriage to this Bradley guy. Uh-huh. Said she needed to believe in something again, that she needed someone to believe in her. Well, I figured her for a pretty nice person, just having a little fling. Even with what you've told me, I believe that part of it. Why? Because she told me, and she cried a little when she was telling me. Oh, I don't care how you look at me. I, I don't think anyone could invent a story that tragic without some sort of basis. Well, maybe you've got a point, Garland, but a good liar can see a story in a newspaper, adapt it to his own needs, and uh, maybe even cry a little about it. Well, I still believe it. You know, Mr. Dollar, you ought to try believing what people tell you sometime. Yeah, I'll try it. Next time I have two weeks off. What? In my business, they call that a vacation. Well, what'll it be, gents? Police. Oh. I'd like to talk to the man who was on duty here at 1 o'clock this afternoon. Oh, that's me, Sergeant. My name's Lenny Pollard. Anything wrong? No, just routine. Well, can I get you something? No, to... thank you. We're trying to locate a woman who's been using the name Ellen Bradley. We were told she was in here around 1 o'clock today. Oh, uh, I don't recognize that name. About 5'5", five, five, dark brown hair, brown eyes. Wore a black strapless summer dress when last seen. 30 or under. Uh-huh. No, no one like that. One o'clock's a pretty quiet time. In fact, all afternoon's been quiet. No woman like that's been in here at all. You been here all the time? Yeah, on duty since 11 o'clock. That's when we open. Uh, you sure this is the right place, the top of it? Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry. Wish I could help you. When we got to the Beverly Glen Hotel, a worried clerk was still wondering what to do with the 14 pieces of luggage Ellen Bradley had left there earlier. No, she hadn't phoned in and given him any instructions. No, she was not registered at the hotel. Sergeant Pells made arrangements for a man to cover the lobby in case she showed up to claim her things. By 8 the next morning, the Central Identification Bureau in Sacramento made a positive identification on a thumbprint taken from her room at the Seaside Hotel. She was identified as Emily Miles Braddock. Her nearest living relative was a sister, Elaine. Address 112 East Orange Avenue, Los Angeles. You! You down there? Yes. Who are you looking for? Elaine Braddock. Are you Miss Braddock? What do you want? I'd like to talk to you for a minute. Well, I don't want to buy nothing. I'm not selling anything. I'm an insurance investigator. You sure you got the right party? Elaine Braddock? Come on up, mister. Just open the door and come on up. Come on in. Come on in. Wanted to see me? Here I am. What do you want to see me about? The gray-haired woman who had cackled at me from the second story was sitting in a wheelchair by the window. My name's Johnny Dollar. I'm here about your sister. Oh, Emily, huh? Yes, we're trying to find her. Has she been around here? We know she's in the Los Angeles area. Emily was here a little bit yesterday afternoon. Where she's gone now, I don't know. Have no idea. How long was she here? Oh, she stayed maybe two or three hours. I hope I don't ever see her again. She's no good. Well, how did she get here? By car? Cab? I don't know. Just standing at the door yesterday, the same as you, all of a sudden. Well, how did she leave? Walked. Tried to borrow some money from me, but I wouldn't give her none, so she had to walk. Did she make any phone calls or see anybody else while she was here? Well, she made a call. Any idea who it was? No. Did you happen to hear anything she said on the phone? No. Showing up here just like that after not writing or letting me hear from her all the time she was away. Getting herself in trouble with the police. Being in jail. Ten years ago when I got hurt, she promised she'd take care of me. Look how she's done it. I have to live on the county. You know that? I got to live on the county and nobody cares about me. Is she, is she in bad trouble? I'm afraid so. Well, how bad is it, mister? Oh, ten years, maybe. Ten years? 
Ten years? Yeah, two was bad enough, but ten. What did you say your name was? Dollar. Mr. Dollar, I hope you don't catch her. Even if she killed someone, I hope you don't catch her. And I hate her. You're only young a little while, and that's all you got. Ten years in prison, and she'd... She'd come out worse off than I am. Friends, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you'll enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. Chew Wrigley's Spearmint while you're working. The lively, full-bodied flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint gives you a refreshing little lift. The smooth, pleasant chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum helps keep you feeling relaxed and satisfied. Makes your job seem easier. Chew Wrigley's Spearmint Gum in your home, when you're out walking or driving, when you're enjoying sports and other activities. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum tastes good anytime, and the natural chewing aids digestion and helps keep your teeth bright and attractive. Yes, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you'll enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. <laughs> Now, with our star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. That afternoon, a follow-up came on Emily Miles Braddock. The completed folder included a mug shot that showed a woman of 30 years with dark brown hair wide-set eyes, a well-formed nose and mouth. I took it with me when I went back to see Tom Garland. Oh, hi. Hi. Mind if I come in? Oh, what now? Your friend. Well, what about her? I've been thinking about what you told me about her yesterday. That's nice. Here. Take a look at this. That's her, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's her. Can we talk now? Okay, come on in. Her name's Emily Braddock, not Ellen Bradley. Up until two months ago, she was in the state correction home for women, serving a two-year term for grand theft. Here, take your picture back. I'm not pushing my weight showing it to you, Garland. But you're a little stubborn about what you want to believe about her. If she lost a baby, as she told you, she was in prison when it happened. I thought I'd better prove this lie. All right, so you proved it. You mind if I sit down? No, help yourself. Thanks. Well, do you have anything else to tell me? Well, I suppose I do, since you don't want to seem to... You don't seem to want to tell me anything. I've been on this case almost a week now. In that time, I've talked to eight different men who have met Emily Braddock... and one woman who knew her by her real name and for what she really is. Garland, every one of those people came out on the short end of things with her. Now, just a minute, Dollar. I've looked at I this mug shot. I've heard these men describe her, and I think I can understand why... It's not hard to imagine this face set off with a nice hairdo, some earrings, makeup, and the works. This sister of hers I met this morning lives in a very crummy neighborhood, a family home. She's all Emily has left, or vice versa. Emily walked out on her. Well, if it's as bad as you say it is, why shouldn't she? For one reason, her sister's a hopeless cripple. But even she would protect Emily. You're my only hope. What? This woman can get away from us right now. She's smart and clever. She can go right on doing the same thing she's been doing all along. Oh, she'll get caught eventually. But, but because I know her and she passed a few bad checks doesn't mean that I'm responsible in any way. You know that. You're right, it doesn't. But you're involved just the same. You're different from a hotel man who's been tilted. You're a boyfriend. True, just a four-day boyfriend. But a woman like that can do a lot of damage in four days' time. Why are you here, Dollar? What do you want? I'm here to disillusion you, Garland, because I don't think you're disillusioned enough right now. Now, wait a minute. I you're don't a perfect stranger that... to me. I don't know you from a Grand Rapids chair. But I'm doing you a favor telling you that Emily Braddock is a crook and a thief and a forger and that everything she ever told you was a lie. 
Now and then a woman walks into a man's life that he'd sell his soul for. But don't ever do any business along those lines with this baby, because all she'll do is give you a bad check for it. She's trouble in a great big way, Garland. And you know it as well as I do. Well, what do you want me to do? Apologize for meeting her? I'll be satisfied if you tell me why you lied. Garland, Emily Braddock never went to that bar you were talking about earlier. You didn't drop her off there. No one there had even seen her. And she's the kind who could walk into the World Series with 50,000 other people around and still be noticed. Where is she now? I don't know. I won't buy that. Not from you. Now, let's try once more. Where is she? What did you do with her after you dropped the luggage off at the Beverly Glen Hotel? Where did you take her? She phoned you from her sister's house yesterday afternoon, didn't she? Right after I'd been here with Sergeant Pelds. Garland, you should see that sister. Helen's in Santa Monica. Where? At a little hotel called El Tonquis. She's registered there as Evelyn Brady. Where's your phone? It's over there. Operator. Sheriff's office, please. Thank you. A dollar? Yeah? A dollar, could it be fixed so that she wouldn't know that I told you? Could be. All of this beats me. I, I don't understand it. What? Oh, what you've told me is true, I know, but an hour ago she called me up and said, Tom, I love you. That sounded true, too. I, I told her I loved her, and now I'm turning her in. What kind of a crazy world do we live in? Twenty minutes later, Sergeant Pels and I were in the rickety elevator in the El Tanquis Hotel, a place as dingy and old as the Spanish name it bore. A little different from the swank hotels where our suspect had lived so gaily. Pels was thinking of it, too. Yeah. Some joint this is. Yeah. What was it, 518? Yeah, it's down this way, I think. This one kind of harpoons you a little, huh? Hmm. Yeah, I suppose so. There are a lot worse things than passing bad checks and telling lies... But the way she handled it, no one even raised an eyebrow. Yeah. yeah I hear this. Yes? Emily Braddock. Beg your pardon? I said, is your name Emily Braddock? You must have the wrong room. My name's Evelyn Brady. Sorry, miss. You're the one we want. I'll have to change into a dress. I'll check the room. Excuse me. What's this all about? I think you already know. I have no idea. What is it all about? Bad checks. There must be some mistake. All right, miss. Go ahead and change. We'll wait out here. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry. We'll have to keep this open a little bit. Oh? You can dress behind it if you want. If that doesn't suit you, well, we'll take you down like you are. Thanks again. Two windows on the outside, no ledge. Fire ladders across the court. Any luggage? A little makeup kit. Dollar? Yeah? Now that you've seen her, what do you think? Well, I'm only human. Too bad she's a crook. Emily Braddock was held at the sheriff's office in Malibu. The officers who questioned her reported that she steadfastly refused to admit any part of some 16 counts that had been filed against her. I wasn't surprised to learn this, but I was surprised when she sent word that she'd like to see me before I left town. Hi. Here you're about ready to beat it. Uh-huh. You're the one who talked to him, aren't you? Talked to who? Tommy Garland. He told you where I was, didn't he? Sure, he did. I thought you wanted to tell me something. You thought wrong. The same as all these others around here. I'm not going to tell you or anybody else anything. Police are like hotel men. You figure out their little system and then you beat it. If you say so. I don't have a lot of time. We could be pretty good friends, you and I, if this hadn't come up. I mean, a drink or something together. 
Rita looked nice. Oh, look, Emily. You're the one who got him to tell where I was. And he asked you to fix it so I wouldn't know. Oh, yeah, Tommy would do that, I know. What I don't know is what you said to him. How did you get him to tell? Is that all you're interested in? It's not asking anything. Well, I told him just what you are. A thief. A crook. That sold him? Well, he told me where to find you. I guess it did. <laughs> I must be slipping. You slept a long time ago. When you walked out on that sister of yours. When you thought you could talk and look your way into anything you wanted. I didn't know I thought that. But if you say so, whatever I've got, it's worked. Has it? Two years, the last time. Whatever you get this time will be longer, no matter what you say or don't say. I'm not in a courtroom yet. That's where it happens. Not in a lousy jail. We'll see about that. You're just as bad and just as dumb as the worst of them. Any day you believe that. Mm, like it says in the manual, when a woman suspect is to be interrogated, remember that the strongest appeal to her is in her family connections and moral outlook. Question her regarding these. Stinking cops. Just stinking cops. You never give up, do you? Hardly ever. Stinking cop. <laughs> Emily Braddock goes to trial next month. I won't be there, but six clients of Baltimore liability will be. <music> Expense account item five. Miscellaneous, $265. Item six, same as item one, transportation back to Hartford. Expense account total... $738.32. Remarks. The next time I go after a check artist, I hope it isn't a good-looking woman who feels that there's no one in the world she can't dominate. This last one scared me, even if she was behind bars. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Remember, friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum refreshes you. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum gives you real chewing enjoyment. The lively, full-bodied flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint cools your mouth, freshens your taste, sweetens your breath. The smooth, pleasant chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint helps keep you feeling relaxed and satisfied, makes whatever you're doing more enjoyable. Yes, for refreshment plus chewing enjoyment, Treat yourself often to Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Millions enjoy it daily. Get a few packages and always keep some handy. That's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar... Brought to you by Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum, stars John Lund in the title role and was written by E. Jack Newman with music by Milton Charles. Featured in tonight's cast were James McCallion, John McIntyre, Bill Conrad, Stacey Harris, Jeanette Nolan, and Joan Banks. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. <laughs> The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's story of Johnny Dollar and that you're enjoying delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum every day. This is Charles Lyon inviting you to join us again next week at this same time when, from Hollywood, John Lund returns as... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is the CBS Radio Network.